Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. In my last video that discussed Ancient Antarctica, I saw a number of comments from viewers telling me that the Piri Reis map was not the only ancient map that shows Antarctica. And yes, with a little research there are in fact at least two more. In this video, I'll be taking a look at one by Philippe Bouche, supposedly made in 1739 and it apparently shows an ice-free Antarctica. I showed in my last video how the Piri Reis map is most likely showing us a skewed form of South America, and not Antarctica, and I think this becomes more obvious the more you look at it. But what about the other map? Well, it too is used as evidence for a lost ancient civilization that mapped Antarctica, and it was also included in Charles Hapgood's book. It shows an ice-free Antarctica with the sea running through the middle, and the title of the map even translates to Map of the Southern Lands Contained Between the Tropic of Capricorn and the Antarctic Pole, where the new discoveries made in 1739 to the south of the Cape of Good Hope may be seen. Catchy title. The map mentions there are icebergs in the south, it mentions the freezing temperatures and large glaciers. The map even shows a number of the large icebergs pictorially. It is a strange map because some aspects seem accurate, but from reports written by the 18th century French explorers, we know there was certainly ice in the southern polar regions at this time. So even if they discovered Antarctica, how could it be ice free? Where did the information on the map come from? Well, before we get too excited, Philip Bouche was a geographer but also a theoretical geographer, who sometimes published facts but also published hypotheses. He was an intelligent, educated man and went on to join the Ministry of the Navy where he became a cartographer. Ten years before his famous map was published, he was even the geographer to the king, but he is best known for his pioneering theoretical geography. He was a meticulous researcher, and the work he produced was based on information from the most recent voyages around the world. Through his education of geography, he theorised the existence of Alaska and the Bering Strait, and this was before they were officially discovered by the West. Regarding the southern polar regions, he knew from recent expeditions that there were numerous large icebergs in the sea, and he believed they originated from a central Antarctic sea, which obviously did prove to be false. So, he made educated guesses, and he got some things right and some things wrong. But he is known today because of his apparent accurate depiction of the subglacial topography of Antarctica something that is obviously not possible in the 18th century, as we know it was covered with thick ice sheets. Many people, including Charles Hapgood, have claimed that comparing the sonar images of the Antarctic coastline to the one on this map and also the Piri Reis map, do show clear correlations. But, as pointed out on BadArchaeology.com, nobody actually knows what the coastline of an ice-free Antarctica looks like, even today, because if the ice was removed, two important things happen. Firstly, the water that makes the ice has to go somewhere, and so the level of the sea will rise dramatically, drowning the coastline that is seen on this diagram. Then you get the isostatic uplift of Antarctica. As is clearly documented in the northern polar regions, if you load continental crust with huge thick ice sheets, the crust flexes downwards, and as Earth is a dynamic planet, other parts of the crust flex upward. But if you remove the ice from Antarctica today, the continent would rise up. It basically bounces back so the crust reaches equilibrium. It is estimated that some parts would rise by more than 3,000 metres. Therefore, nobody can claim that Philippe Bouche or even the Piri Reis map are accurate, because we have no idea how it would look if it was ice free. There is no point looking at minor details of the continent's edges and comparing it to the coastline of these maps, because the coastline of an ice-free Antarctica is completely unknown. Strangely, what many researchers fail to mention are the words of Philippe Bouche himself. The map contains, in writing, a number of annotations and legends. 
As stated on the Bad Archaeology website, the cartographer wrote, conjectured and suspected on many parts of the southern continent, including the sea in the middle. Therefore, he openly admits that this map is guesswork. As these diagrams show, the land under Antarctica today is fragmented, and yes, there are seas in the middle of the continent. Something which people point out is also shown on the Philippe Bouche map, and therefore his map is accurate. Well, for a start, it's not really that accurate, but it is something that does need dealing with. We know that Bouche was a well-known hypothetic geographer, and he concerned himself with many undiscovered parts of the world. And, by looking at his work, we do know why he thought there was a southern sea that split the continent. One of the openings to the Inland Sea is near the southern tip of South America, a location where explorers documented floating icebergs in the 17th century. More floating icebergs were noted by explorers, where Bouche places the second opening to the sea. Based on the floating icebergs, Bush connected these two observations and believed there to be a sea running through the middle of the proposed continent. He never said he used an old source map to come to this conclusion. He himself admits it is merely hypothetical. To back this up, he even published his claims in the Gentleman's Magazine of 1763, where he details his ideas for the southern polar region. He believed there was a southern polar sea that was fed by mountain ranges and huge rivers in order to create such enormous icebergs. He believed that enormous rivers created the icebergs, yet he also wrote conjectured over where he placed the southern polar sea, showing that he was making an educated guess. He actually did not believe that icebergs could have formed from an ice sheet that had developed on a landmass, because he had no evidence that such ice sheets existed when he put pen to paper and made his map. But we should add, Bush actually made two maps, and one of them contains no hypotheses. It is actually blank as shown here. Both maps were made apparently at the same time, and this version, without the hypothetical South Polar Lands and Sea, is the main version, simply because it was more accurate for the time. In Charles Hapgood's book, all of the annotations that say suspected and conjectured were removed, which could mean there was another version without labels, or it could be that the truth was distorted on purpose. We really don't know. Interestingly, as the Bad Archaeology website says, there is only one copy of the map in existence that contains the Antarctic landmass, whereas there are many versions without it. It is therefore possible that this map that shows the landmass is a fraud, created by someone else who drew the hypothetical land in position based on the writings of Bush. So, there is still some mystery in the story, but there is no mystery of what we are looking at. We are not looking at an accurate portrayal of Antarctica. And furthermore, the most important point to take home is that nobody really knows what an accurate Antarctic landmass would even look like if the ice was removed. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.